If you're a developer, you've probably heard of ShadCN. Well, recently they just updated their CLI and I briefly want to go over that. And I also want to show you how you can create your own private custom components or blocks with this new CLI. All you're going to have to do is share the URL and now you have access to your private custom component or your friends or developers you know can have access to it too with one single command using ShadCN CLI. So if this sounds interesting to you, if you can hit that like button and also subscribe for more, that would be greatly appreciated. But other than that, let's jump into it and let's show you how you can do it too. Let's quickly go over the ShadCN CLI for those who have never used it. We're gonna, I'm gonna tell you what it is and how to use it. So the CLI allows you to add ShadCN components to your project, okay? They just released a new ShadCN CLI as of August, 2024. And to start, you have to use the init command to initialize the configuration and dependencies for your new project. The init command is going to install dependencies, it's going to add the CN util, it's going to configure your Tailwind file, and it's going to add CSS variables to your project. And to do that, you all you have to do is run the single command npx shad cn at latest init. And then you're going to be asked a few questions. You could pick whatever you want based on your project's preference. And then after that, you have the ability to use the add command to add ShadCN components and dependencies to your project. And the components, as you can see here at the left side of my screen, are here. So you could add like a button, you could add a dialogue, you could add a form, you could add an input, you could add whatever component you want from ShadCN by running this single command, npx ShadCN at latest add, and then the component's name, for example, button. And what this does, it adds the component and the dependency to your project. And the very cool thing about ShadCN compared to any other component library is that it will actually pretty much embed the source code into your project as well. Unlike other component libraries where you have to install a package and you don't have access to that source code. So that is why ShadCN is above all the rest of the other component libraries as of now. So the change log is gonna show us more information on the updates they did in August of 2024 on the ShadCN CLI. So we're gonna go inside the change log and inside the change log is considered a complete rewrite with a lot of new features and improvements, which now you can install components, themes, hooks, utils, and more using the NPX ShadCN add command. And they go over a few points, they go over six points here, but the main one I want to harp on is that you can install remote components using just a URL. So that is number three. And you could do this by running the command npx shadcn add and then the URL. And the URL must be pointing to a JSON file. So as you can see here, this is pointing to a navbar.json file. And it must be done this way because that's how the shadcn CLI works in the backend, okay? And you could read over these points as well if you want, like it has support for all major React frameworks out of the box now. You can create and distribute private components, which is what I'm gonna show you. And then also gives you an option where you could try the new CLI today by running this command. But I'm gonna show you another way where you could try the CLI by running the command, and that is through v0.dev. And v0.dev is actually made by ShadCN, or ShadCN greatly influenced this project. I don't know if he made it or if he helped, but v0.dev is an AI software that all you have to do is enter a prompt for example, I said create me a login module, and all it does is it creates the code for the login module, and it shows me a preview of how it works. So it's pretty cool. It creates UI components with the power of AI. And what you can do is you, you could either copy the code manually, like this, just copy this code, or you could use the CLI from ShadCN. So this is the new CLI. So npx ShadCN add, and then the remote URL which is considered this URL and it's gonna to point to this JSON file of this code. So you run that command and you're gonna be able to get all of this code inside of your code base. So that is one way of showing how the remote URL works. And like I said, you can actually create your own remote URLs and create your own private components and use them for yourself or you can share them with other developers and they can use your custom components or blocks for their projects as well. I wanna go over the block I created using my coding experience and then implementing the ShadCN CLI 
into this block. So now I can use a remote URL to share this to anybody I want, developers, friends, or even myself. So here is the sidebar I created. As you can see, it is fully functional. I coded this using Next.js and TypeScript. And what I could do now is I can actually share this code with somebody by just using a single command line, which is npx shadcn at latest add. There's the remote URL pointing to that JSON file. So to understand how do you guys can do this yourself, I'm going to show you how I did it. And then that'll give you a better understanding of how you can actually implement it in your code as well. So at the moment, ShadCN doesn't have any documentation on how to create private components using a remote URL. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to go to GitHub and pretty much study and inspect their open source file of ShadCN. So everything is open source. So you can actually view all the source code and study it. But I want to kind of navigate you and gravitate you towards the files you should be looking at. And if you go inside of UI forward slash apps forward slash WW, here's the files you should be looking at. So inside of the registry folder, you are going to have a schema.ts. I would look at that because that's defining the types of how your JSON file should be structured and how the components should be structured or blocks. Then you also want to look at the registry dash UI.ts file. Another file you want to look at is the index.ts file. Then you can go inside the default folder, inside of the registry folder, and then you can look at the UI. This is where they're actually creating the components using a TSX file. So this is how he coded it. He's coding it with TypeScript and Next.js inside of those files right there. We're going to close the registry file folder. And then he has a scripts folder, which is how he's building a registry and it's not necessary to have a script, but he's having a build-registry.mts file here. I'll look at that as well. Another folder is the public folder, and then inside there, there's an R folder. And then you can see there's an index.json folder, file, not folder, file, where there's a JSON file with all of the components. You can also look inside of the registry folder inside there. And you can just look at all of them in here as well. It's the same file. And as you can see, he is creating the code. And the theme is you create the code and then you create it and convert it to a JSON file with specific schemas that you need to follow. So this is good. It's going to take you a little bit to go through it all, but we've already done that. So I'm going to show you how I did it. And I'm going to take you step by step on how you can create your private components right now. So let's jump over into my code. And right here, I have a Next.js application open. And this is the same application that I just showed you when I created that sidebar about three, four minutes ago. And the steps you need to do is first, you need to create a component or a block. So the block we created was a sidebar. And what you're going to do is you're going to create a registry folder on the root of your project. And inside that registry folder, we have a block folder. And if you want to create a UI, you should create a UI folder. And then inside that block folder, you need to have another folder, which is going to be the name of the block that you're creating. So for us, it's going to be sidebar 01. And then you have to create all of pretty much the sidebar with TypeScript, or you could use JavaScript, I guess, but TypeScript, I recommend. And then we created the sidebar with these specific four files right here. And then after we created those, we went and created a registry-components.ts file inside of the registry folder. And what we did here is we created a pretty much a UI, right? And it's following a certain schema called registry. And if we go inside the registry schema, which is in the schema.ts, that is the same schema file that I said that you need to look at on the GitHub. We literally copied and pasted over here because this is this setup that you need to follow for your JSON file. So like I said, the CLI works by looking at the JSON file and running the command based off that JSON file. So we've created the code using TypeScript. Now we need to convert it to JSON, right? So we have everything here, export const UI, and then we're exporting from here and we have a name, right? We have a type, which is registry block and we hover over it. 
Here's the different types that we define inside of the schema file. We have a registry dependencies, and this is for the ShadCN components that you're using. So we're using the button, the popover, the separator, the input, and the command. We're using that inside of this sidebar that we created, right? So we have to list out these registry dependencies so that whenever somebody uses the CLI, they're gonna be able to automatically just get these dependencies installed onto their code base. And then if you do have dependencies that aren't ShadCN related, you're gonna have another field called dependencies and then you have to define them. So like for example, if you have Stripe, you have Stripe or if you have like Lucid icons, you do that as well. But we don't have any that we're using. And then we define a files array and this is the files path that we are looking at and making sure they're in the JSON file. So for us, we have forward slash block, forward slash sidebar one, and then the names of each of the TSX files. And the reason why you don't see the registry in front of it is because by default, next uh, ShadCN looks inside of the registry folder. So this is the structure you need to create right here. A registry folder, create your component or block, get a registry.components.ts, a schema, and an index.ts. So we're exporting it as a registry components and we're just um, map like going through all of the UI components we're getting from the registry components.ts. Okay, so after we do that, we did create a script tag, but we modified it and I would I am going to put this code in the description so you guys could see it as well. But what this does is pretty much makes a directory, writes a file, changes our TSX files into uh, string format, JSON format, so we can actually create a JSON file, right? And that is gonna be inside the public folder. So if you look at it, we have a public folder and then we have a registry folder, and then we have a sidebar 01.json folder right here, file. And like I said, we have the registry dependencies, the type, the name, and the files. And inside the files, we have the type, which is a block, and it will be a UI if you're just creating a, like a component like a button or input. We have the content, which is the actual code itself from the TSX file. We have the path, which is where we're getting the code from. So block sidebar01, and this is sidebar01.tsx file. This one's the account switcher.tsx file, and this is the code for that specific file. And then we also have a target. And a target is going to be what folder and what path that the code is going to be when it ends up on the person who runs the CLI. So for example, if I run the CLI on my specific code base, it is going to install all of these files inside of components slash block slash sidebar01 slash sidebar01.tsx and so on and so on. So as you see, we have four files here that are defined. And this is in the public folder, so it is public facing. So if I go to the URL, UI cart dot io slash registry because it's in the registry slash sidebar 01 dot json you're going to see that whole json file and as you can see it's the same fields right so we have the content with all of the code the path the target the type the registry dependencies the type the name all that good stuff and if you do want to use that ShadCN CLI, like I said, it has to be pointing to a JSON file and it has to be publicly available, right? So if we go to docs slash sidebar one, that is going to be the same remote URL that I just typed in. So now we could use this CLI because we have the correct JSON format file of this sidebar 01.json file. So I'm gonna copy this I'm gonna open up a different uh, project. And as you see, can see, I already have it in here, but I'm gonna delete that real quick. I'm gonna run this command. And what this is going to do, it's going to add that sidebar to this specific project. And as you can see, it created a, let me zoom in. It created this block folder with a sidebar 01 with all of the TSX files. So I didn't have to co manually copy and paste anything over. All I had to do was run run command line. And then it's asking me if I wanna overwrite the 
existing dependencies, which are the registry dependencies. I'm just going to put no because I haven't changed them. And if you don't have those registry dependencies, it's just going to give you those ShadCN components inside of your UI folder inside of the components folder. So it's going to look like this. And now you could use the sidebar01 on any project you want by just running that single command. So hopefully that was easy to understand. And like I said, if it's not, you guys can leave a comment in the comment section on how you guys can create your own custom private component. But I'm going to put helpful notes on the screen throughout the whole video so you guys could hopefully understand it anymore. But other than that, that's pretty much the gist of everything when it comes to adding a private component using a remote URL with the new Shad CNCLI. So if this video has helped you, hit that like button and then also subscribe for more content just like this because I am definitely have a few more videos I plan on coming out with in the next few weeks. But other than that, thanks for watching and have a good day.